true conflict of One Punch Man is Saitama's hopeless obsession for just another fun fight and his refusal to move on with his life from that. Saitama keeps saying that he's a hero for fun, and yet if there is one thing we know about the strongest anime character ever, it's that he doesn't have a lot of fun being one. <laughs> The guy who right from the start has everything that all other shonen heroes dream of and desperately struggle for is suffering from a dreadful existential crisis because of this power. But I feel like people are surprisingly confused about the point One Punch Man is trying to make as a story. It's not merely a parody of conventional shonen and superhero stories or merely a story about what it means to be a good hero. It's also one that you will find has a surprisingly deep and profound view on life, happiness, and purpose. And so what I've learned is that One Punch Man is such a masterpiece because it resonates with you not on one, but exactly four levels of meaning. Level 1. The Parody Saitama is fucking hilarious. If you've ever watched any of my videos, you'll know that I absolutely love shonen anime. The epic fights, the tragic backstories, the inspiring training arcs, the Menta guy with the white hair who is kind of cooler than the main character. I love it all. The problem you might have realized is that this description basically fits every single anime out there. And now we have two things that we absolutely do not want. Predictability and repetitiveness. What made One Punch Man an instant success, even with the very first episode, is that it brutally makes fun of the typical hero. Hell, the name of the anime itself is a parody. One Punch Man, a story about a guy who defeats any enemy in an instant, starts with the hero where all other stories end. At the pinnacle of the world, the strongest of them all. And it's usually the story of how we got there that is so damn exciting. All the blood and tears that were shed along the way, all the obstacles and enemies that had to be defeated, and all the relationships formed along the way. All of it to become the strongest in order to change the world. Now, Saitama is a guy who used to work at a convenience store who then decided to become a hero for fun. He never had any major motivation for it and the most struggle he actually went through was doing a basic daily workout routine. Well, that and losing his hair, which is actually pretty brutal. But at the start of the story, he's pretty much an average guy who just sort of got motivated to do something great, but actually succeeded right away. And so for anyone like me who has suffered through endless training arcs and dead loved one dies, so I guess the main character gets a power up scenes, this is just a hilarious hilarious thing to see. Now the true magic however lies in the fact that every single character in One Punch Man is written as 100% serious. Except Saitama. Everyone is designed to fit perfectly into some of your typical shonen anime tropes. Genos, Garo, and Moomin Rider are textbook examples of shonen protagonists, all with their own struggles and the will to become stronger. <laughs> With Bang, you have the powerful, wise mentor, and pretty much every single villain, whether minor or major, would fit perfectly as a serious opponent in any other story. Pretty much all of the characters have unique and cool designs, tragic pasts, and complex motivations. And most importantly, everyone is drawn seriously and acts seriously, except Saitama. He's a pretty boring, average dude that is purposefully lazily and comically drawn. And yet, since he is the strongest of them all, he stumps on all the accomplishments of the serious characters around him. Take for example Moomin Rider with his courage in the face of an enemy that outmatches him completely. <laughs> We see him suffer and still get up over and over again, proving all the qualities we want in our typical hero. I got so excited for him defeating the enemy against all the odds. But just when you feel that the hard work and true grit will pay off, Moomin Rider is defeated in a single punch and it is no other than Saitama who arrives late to the scene and then effortlessly saves the day, thinking to himself, <sighs> 
今回は少し期待したんだけどな。So basically, the character that I now spend all this time relating to and identify with gets defeated in an instant, while all my hopes are undercut by one effortless punch. And it is so incredibly funny because I know exactly that the anime is making fun of my expectations on purpose. And I realize that the same happens with the villains as well. Dr. Janice, exiled from the scientific community, has spent 50 years of his life trying to unlock the key to humanity's evolution. Finally, creating the powerful and mentally unstable creature Carnage Kabuto. A creature fully taken in by his own power and perfection. And yet, all the build up we get and the characterization for both of these great antagonists is once again undercut right away. When Kabuto actually gets Saitama to reveal the secret of his incredible power, usually a fantastic opportunity to depict a character's mental and physical development, it turns out to be a simple workout routine. <laughs> <laughs> the ease with which he reached the top and defeats all enemies robs all of the supporting characters, like Genos, of any meaning they've derived from their struggles. The rate at which One Punch Man keeps subverting common anime and superhero tropes is just pure greatness, I think. Saitama just has this ungodly amount of power, and the worst. Or, I guess, best part about it is that he didn't do anything special to deserve it. He isn't the chosen one or an underdog who has sacrificed everything to get to the top. He really is just this 25 year old guy who's unsatisfied with work. And so I can't help but laugh my ass off every single episode as a result of this. Level 2 The Social Critique Shonen is predictable, obsession corrupts, and life without a challenge is pointless. Once I start I started to dig a little bit deeper into the comedic surface of One Punch Man, I quickly discovered that many aspects of the anime are quite critical of the current status of shonen anime, the concept of superheroes in general, as well as the societies that these stories take place in. The first and most obvious message I found is once again directly connected to the premise of the story. Saitama is a man who has obtained absolute power. <laughs> Because he's the strongest, he's able to defeat one end boss level monster after the next, something every other hero dedicated his entire being towards. And yet, at the end, he's as dissatisfied as he was working a regular job. Life is dull without a challenge. When there are no stakes and no consequences to fear for anything we do, life becomes less enjoyable. Beginning the story as a delusioned young man with a full head of hair, searching for a job in business, Saitama discovers a passion for hero work that, for the first time in his life, lights a fire in his eyes. But three years later, the thrill is gone, along with his trademark anime hair, and he has gained the power to end any fight in just one punch. Even though Saitama is a really nice guy, He has fallen prey to his own desires and expectations. After all, his great wish to become a hero in the first place was because he thought it was fun, finally, something he could do that he's actually good at. <laughs> And so, even though he usually does the morally right thing, he doesn't fight to save others, he fights for his own personal pleasure. And since he already is the strongest, this obsession with having a good fight leaves him eternally dissatisfied. This is the true conflict in One Punch Man. It is the central theme of the story. This obsession with the goal of becoming stronger, which typically sets our heroes apart from the rest and allows them to grow, here is explored through a more human and realistic lens. Take a moment to really appreciate that the most common way normal people turn into monsters in this world is by succumbing to their obsessions. Crablante, for example, was so obsessed with eating crabs that he turned into one. Phoenix Man was obsessed with grief and with his role in his cancelled TV show, so much so that he merged with his bird costume. Genos turns less and less human with every single upgrade he gets. 
乾燥すればその埼玉くんを超えることができるかもしれない。Garo becomes more and more monster the harder he pushes, all the way to a my mask who is consumed by his desire to be beautiful. And so I started to get the strong feeling that the lines between humans and monsters get more and more blurred as the story unfolds. So once again, subverting typical anime tropes, the main theme is not about not giving up. In fact, the story has made it clear at several points that there are times when a person really should give up. It is actually a story about staying human. That insight really hit home for me when I rewatched the last episode of season one. Bora's backstory is pretty much exactly the same as Saitama's. He's an invincible being that got so obsessed with a good fight that he started eradicating planets in order to find stronger opponents. He is meant to be an exact mirror for Saitama's faults, a warning for what our bold hero might become should he find no way to leave his obsession behind. On a larger scale, I also found that One Punch Man criticizes the concept of superhero societies in general. How can creators keep upping the stakes and make it interesting for fans who've already seen it all? Is there a point? Where it all kind of starts to feel recycled. In the world of One Punch Man, this is expressed in the form of the Hero Association, whose creation was actually sparked by Saitama himself when he saved a little kid from the crab. As it turns out, that he had a lot of money. However, since Saitama lives mostly outside the system in general, we get to experience it for the first time side by side with him. I personally found that the Hero Association's ranking system and the egos and internal strife within it are a super interesting take on the idea of superheroes as famous celebrities. The message here being power doesn't corrupt, it only reveals who you were all along. Level 3 The Life Lesson Saitama teaches you what actually matters in life. You may or may not believe me, but the true message behind One Punch Man actually goes even deeper than we've already gone. Far from being a pure comedy show or simply criticizing the status quo in anime, one has intentionally planned his story to be the real deal right from the start. The world of One Punch Man, with its enormous cities that are harassed by cataclysmic monsters every other day, is built specifically so that Saitama can work as a protagonist, a guy who punches big and strong things on a daily basis. That makes it even more impressive to me than how rich and real this world starts to feel a few episodes into the story. We talked about all characters but Saitama being written completely seriously. But that does not only result in a comedic effect, but it also makes these people feel real and relatable and we have a lot of fantastic character arcs for people like Genos, Garo and Sonic. <laughs> Their contrast to Saitama is not only to be funny, they contrast him to shine light on the true point of One Punch Man as a story. Drawing him as simply as he is has the really fascinating effect that we have to judge him not by his appearance, but by his actions and personality. Soka. No epic hair and no badass costume. Saitama is so special as a main character because People love him for just being himself. Wanting to be the strongest is something that only very few people can actually relate to. Worrying about money, what to have for dinner, and procrastinating important stuff we have to do on the other hand, pretty relatable. Watching TV and playing video games on a Tuesday morning, also extremely relatable. Saitama is easy to love as a character because power reveals who someone is at heart. And Saitama is just this nice but sort of clueless dude in his 20s. And it's no big surprise to me, I think, that this is extremely attractive to people. <laughs> Most importantly, however, Saitama's big flaw as a character might be the most relatable thing of them all. He is obsessed with the thought that being a strong hero will make him happy, will fulfill him. And yet, once he gets what he wants, it 
doesn't. The real journey of Saitama is not finding someone that he can have a real fight with. Once that happens, it would just be straight back to dissatisfaction two days later. It's Saitama realizing that he needs to move on from his fantasy and actually become a great hero character-wise. Finding happiness in the moment by spending time with people like Genos and finding purpose in his ability to protect humanity and inspire others. Funnily enough, it is actually King who summarizes the goal of One Punch Man as a series perfectly. Here's another video for you to watch.